What's up guys? Recently Amazon released the June patch notes part 1. I thought last patch notes would be the last one until beta, but here we are. Since it's a part 1, you could probably expect another one either later in the month or sometime before beta in July 20th. This one has some updates that people have been asking for forever, like better character creation, better player movement, and of course more armor and weapon variety. As always guys, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to stay up to date on New World. It's free, and you can always unsub later. So now, let's get into it. First up, we have some general changes. They fixed 1,209 bugs. Increased company member limit from 50 to 100. Updated new player quests related to choosing a faction and gathering and refining for the constable. Added a new series of lore notes in each zone with additional revelations about the zone's constable. I love that they're expanding the company size limit. 50 players was a little too limiting. Next is progression updates. So let's go over the buffs to XP gains. There's a few. For finding lore notes, the base XP has been increased from 25 to 40, and XP is increased by 10, up from 5, for every 10 notes discovered. Double the XP rewards for discovering POIs, or points of interest. I like that they're trying to reward exploring. Few MMOs do this right, but now we have a whole set of nerfs to the XP gain for mul from multiple sources. They increased the XP required to level by 40% for all levels after level 7. That is an absolutely massive one. Reduced XP gain from Corrupted Breaches by 10 to 20% based on the level of the breach. Decreased the breach spawn speed from 15 minutes to 30 minutes for minor breaches. And from 30 minutes to 60 minutes for major breaches. Reduced the XP from faction missions to compensate for the change in mission structure since they've made them faster now. Reduced XP from PvP missions by about 20%. These are some pretty major nerfs to leveling. Personally, I want a time investment when leveling, and I grew up on games like Classic WoW and RuneScape, so in my eyes, these changes are nice. Here's some more changes. Arenas will now require one party member to have a tuning orb for entry. Increase the rewards for completing an arena. Tuning orbs will be given during the initial quest and can be crafted from materials found around Eternum. Added the crafting missions we removed from faction missions to town projects. Along with the move to town projects, cooking and armor and armament crafting missions have been overhauled and changed to be more accessible. There is a maximum of four ingredients for any mission. Tuned armor and armament missions to require less of each material. These missions now require materials from tier 1 to tier 4. Raise the cap on the number of active buy and sell contracts to 100 per character. And now they reordered the territory standing rewards at each level. Rewards will be more relevant to early game. For the early rewards, such as storage increase, territory standing bonus, and XP bonus. They tried to make you pick between things that are similar for the rewards, such as taxes and fees. On one, and territory standing and faction token bonus on another. Furnishing points from standing bonus has been increased from 1 to 5. I'm really liking the sound of this tuning orb system. I think it will tie into the economy well, and it'll be a consistent source of money. So now we have loot and gear. Gray rarity no longer binds on equip to reduce pop-ups and complexity for new players. And now the gear and rewards. Added 50 new armor sets that can be obtained through a variety of in-game activities updated visuals, stats, and perks for many of the unique weapons and armor sets, which you can find from all of the major content such as Invasions, Wars, Corrupted Breaches, Outpost Rush, Lazarus Well, 
Garden of Genesis, The Depth, Shattered Obelisk, Arena's mini endgame elite points of interest. And we have a couple pictures here that show off the armor you can get, and all of them look pretty badass. The golden one with the crown kind of looks like some Dwemer armor from the Elder Scrolls. The possible perks from each source have been narrowed to give each piece more focus on benefits they provide. 27 new trinket rewards for war, breach, invasion, and outpost rush. Updated the color scheme on a few weapons throughout the game. Color on weapons dropped by lost enemies updated to match better. Colors on spears, rapiers, and great axes dropped by angry earth changed to match their theme better. Color on spears and rapiers dropped by ancients updated to match their theme. They added two unique trade skill apparel sets that can be discovered throughout Eternum. They will provide no benefit to combat, but they will be stacked with perks to aid in crafting or gathering depending on the set. They added named weapon drops to a global list of drops that can occur anywhere in the game, and they will be bind on equip. I'm loving the armor and weapon variety. I'm glad to see that they put skilling outfits into the game. I can't wait to see the perks that they add to help aid in those areas. Next we have some UI changes, and the first one is the changes to the main menu, where they've added multiple windows to display any content or information that they want. They've also changed the character select screen. Now you will load into the character select screen instead of world select once you have created your first character. It seems like they added more backgrounds for the character login screen as well. There is a character limit of two per region now. And next we have the gameplay UI polish where they've added icons to damage numbers to show what type of attack it is. A color indicator has been added to show if a attack is effective against a target in relation to the attack type. Status effects will now be directly above the enemy name and have floating texts and a icon to indicate the status effect name. They've changed the compass slightly in POIs or points of interest. The name of the POI will be displayed on the compass until you leave and the distance will only be shown on the compass icon closest to the center of the compass. The old UI was pretty outdated. It's amazing to see how much a UI does for the overall appeal of a game, and these are looking good. Next thing is character appearance options. They've added a ton of options that include new faces, hairstyles, eye color, skin features, scars, and tattoos. This is amazing. I've seen so many people asking for better character creation because it was very limited, and I'm glad to see that they decided to add on to it. Next we have some combat changes that are intended to make combat more fluid or just flow better. The control layout has been changed slightly. Dodge is now bound to shift by default. Jump is now bound to space by default. Remove sprint as an input, it will now occur automatically. Sprinting will now occur automatically and will not require you to press or hold down shift to engage. Combat actions will cause a brief time delay before sprinting turns on automatically. You cannot sprint for 1.5 seconds after the beginning of a outgoing attack. You cannot sprint for 2 seconds after you are hit by an incoming melee attack. To perform special navigation now, you need to press the jump input, which is by default set to space. You will no longer automatically perform special navigation while navigating unless you enter auto run mode. They found players in combat would accidentally vault over stuff or jump roll at the wrong time, ruining the fight so they made a few changes. Remove the roll on jump sprint unless a player is landing from an elevated height. Sprint jump no longer exceeds sprint speed. Stamina will regenerate while na navigating. Removed the stamina cost from jump. Block was making some boss fights too easy, so they've made a few changes. After a block break, 
you will not be able to, to dodge or block for 3 seconds. Stamina will now reset to full after 3 seconds instead of 1.5. Players cannot block as 0 stamina. Stamina will not regenerate while blocking. After a player releases block, there is a 1 second delay before stamina starts to regenerate. Stamina will regenerate while attacking. Default stamina regeneration rate has been reduced from 33 stamina per second to 20 stamina per second. All damaging debuffing and buffing status effects are removed when entering death's door. Timers, food buffs, and other tracking effects are not removed on death's door. You can now trigger abilities and attacks directly from a sheathed state. Pressing a ability button while sheathed will go straight into the attack. Basic attacks and abilities can also be performed directly from prone positions. I don't like that sprinting is automatic. I would prefer to have full control over everything my character is doing. I hope they add an option for manual control. I can't wait to see the next update. I hope we see more on the movement side of things that they didn't touch on here, like not being able to vault over specific things in the preview, but for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you all found this entertaining or useful, and as always guys, have a good one.